Good morning. This is Kelly Hobart from Apica Direct, and I'm here talking about a poncho, but we will be discussing a particular part of the poncho. If you look at it here, it is called Top Notes by Patricia, uh, Petra Breckstone. And this is a lovely poncho. The only problem is on the edges. If you look at her project, you can kind of see it in here at the bottom. It has a lace pattern that basically mimics stockinette stitch and it rolls. So uh, several of the people who had made this project complained of it rolling on the edge. So I wanted to address how to make your edges so they don't roll. So I had several examples that we're going to be talking about today of ideas that you could use with your patterns to keep your edges from rolling because we don't want projects that are so beautiful and they just curl up on the edges. No good. So I'm going to show you how to address that problem. So before we get started, for last week, we had some heritage sock yarn. It's 75, 25% um, uh, merino and nylon. And this was for the winner for last week. So every week we have a prize. And for this week, I was thinking Noro Sonata would be nice because I knit my project out of this color number 17, which is the purple color. And I was thinking that maybe you can help me choose between the blue or the purple for the winner for this next week. And you know, the way that you get entered to win is you post comments in the comment section. Let us know what you're working on. If you can give us those pattern names, it's always handy so that we can take a look at them because I know a lot of us knitters out there like lovely projects and we get so excited about a new project. And so if you have a great project and you share it with us, we might be able to knit it too. So that's totally fantastic. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is our knit club project just came out and here it is. It's a double knit hat and it is great fun. So if you guys out there are uh, learning to knit and want step-by-step -step help with your projects, this is a double knit hat where you get to learn how to do double knitting with me helping you all along the way. And here's what it looks like when I was wearing it. So much fun. Double knitting is awesome. If you haven't done it before, I would highly recommend that you sign up for the Knit Club so you can get our projects because every month I try and find a new skill for you to learn. So your skills are just building on top of each other and pretty soon, hey, you might be able to teach me and that'd be totally awesome. I'm totally up for that. We got, I think, 14 videos posted today. Yay, 14 videos for our double knit hat. So in that project, I teach you how to fix mistakes, how to go backwards in your work. So maybe you're knitting your hat and you've done a nice long stretch of the pattern and you accidentally put a brown stitch where the brown isn't supposed to be. I show you how to fix it. <laughs> isn't that cool? So anyway, if you haven't done double knitting and you feel like you could use a class on that, it's always awesome to sign up for that knit club. The yarn and everything is included, everything except for the needles, of course. But um, you get a lot of learning in these small little packages, and every month you get to learn something new. So that's totally fantastic. Jim, can you zoom in on our the poncho that I'm doing this week? Mm -hmm. See here, I've done a provisional cast on, on my edge, and I'm going to decide later on which edge I'm going to use. Once I get it done, I'll kind of decide what works good. I'm going to try a few different things. This hasn't been blocked yet. And like I said, it's made out of this lovely Sonata. And if you look at the Sonata, it's 35% cotton, 25% viscose, which is from bamboo, 20% silk, and 20% polyamide. And so this yarn is... Um, hand painted from Noro and Noro does a great job doing their hand painted um, yarns. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're very time consuming to be uh, hand painted like that. And so they're actually very much worth the little bit of extra money that you have to pay for them. And then um, the I paired, what's that? It doesn't itch, you said. It doesn't itch. Yes. Well, this Noro one, uh, some of the Noro yarns, they do a lot of work in the hand painting, um, but they are using a more uh, 
kind of an itchier wool. And so some of them, it's, I wish they would put all their wools so they don't itch. And then um, it'd be worth it to buy them because you could actually use them. But my sense, skin is very sensitive and not everyone has the itchy problem like I do. Also, I paired that purple color with these watercolor halo yarns and these are hand painted by the alpaca yarn company and if you guys have ever used kid silk haze this gives you this very similar halo effect to your projects and it's 100 percent baby alpaca hand painted and the price on it is price point is really really good i think it's better than um the kid silk haze right jim mm -hmm. and so if you guys haven't used this halo watercolors um it adds just a little tiny bit of a color effect you can see on my project here this was my base yarn that I used and then I used this halo watercolor with it and when it gets blocked out it just adds a nice fuzziness and it's uh, not itchy it is really super soft baby 100% baby alpaca and they do a good job of hand painting their yarns too so I really like if I want to get a halo effect lots of times I will actually use the halo from the alpaca yarn company it's totally awesome so now back to our rolled edges if we look at our pattern here so we have on the bottom she pretty much has her lace patterns going straight off right from the very beginning and then at the top she has this i-cord bind off so next week i will be talking about how to join our i-cord and make it look better because if you look can you zoom in right here in particular that's where her i-cord began and ended the beginning and the end of the i-cord and it looks rather un unsightly in the picture and so let's take a look a second at our samples that i've created for you so the first sample and i haven't blocked any of these samples so they are as they are knit um they're not blocked i'm trying not to make them any different than they would be if i'm um knitting them so that you can see exactly what it does. Now this is stockinette stitch and stockinette stitch when knit flat is knit a row and purl a row and if you are doing it in the round of course it's all knits and you can see how it kind of wants do you see how it wants to curl on the edges it kind of uh it kind of wants to curl in do you see that I'm I'm not I mean it just really, really wants to curl. And it can be um, very unsightly when you make the edge of your project, like this poncho here, if it flips up and all you see is the underside of it. That's not a good look. We want to avoid that, right? So this first example of an idea of how you could prevent that rolled edge is a ribbed edge. And it does help decrease the curling. This one is a knit one, purl one ribbed edge. So if you look at it really closely, it lays pretty flat. And that's just a knit one, purl one. And here's the back of it. Yeah, compared to the other one. Yeah. See, this, see how curled that one is? I mean, I could kind of try to force it out, down flat. But the minute you let loose of it, um, it's going to want to curl on its own. Where this one is not blocked, and um, it is really super nice. It did pretty good. And that's just a knit one, purl one. So I really like that. Um, just adding a little bit of ribbing to the edge. And if you don't want a ton of ribbing, you can just three or four rows is enough to fix the whole problem. So this third example, and this one is a garter stitch edge. And I've used, I've, I've done a regular, um, cast on but I used a easy sewn bind off for the edge and if you guys haven't seen what the easy sewn bind off looks like on the edge it's right here so let me show you the front of it so here it is at the very top isn't that cool it almost you know has a nice robust rounded look to it but it very much mimics the garter stitch and I really look, like the look of that so that is the garter stitch, which is knit every row, one done flat. And I did three stitches on each side. And then the two garter ridges with the bind off. Isn't that fantastic? And it really cuts down, it, it 
curls just a little bit in the center. Let's see. See, it wants to curl just a little bit too, but the edges are still flat. So when you're doing it, the center might want to curl just a little bit, but the edges are going to stay flat, which is going to make it look good. Isn't that awesome? And that's just a knit every row for three stitches on your edges. And then, um, then it is two garter ridges, which is four rows. Mm -hmm. Now this bottom one in the pattern, it's there. She has you do, let me show you reaches real quick, Jim. In the top here, if you look in the top here, this is three by one ribbing, meaning three knit stitches and one purl. So I thought, hmm, let's see what we can do to do three knit stitches and one purl. So I've already started taking my provisional cast on out because I wanted to show you this so what is it you're high cord edge. Well, I'm just going to show on on the bottom here. Let me let me take it out so I can show you, and then I'll tell you what I've done when I knit it. Because our goal is how can we add a little bit extra to our edge and keep our overall project from rolling and keep it nice and flat so we can see that lovely lace detail that we've knit, right? So on the bottom on here, actually it was knit this way because I did a provisional cast on and then I did a three by one, which is knit three purl one ribbing. And then on this edge is three knit stitches and one purl stitches stitch. But you can see how even one purl stitch on the edge can help you straighten out your fabric. See how flat that lies? And I did not block any of these samples so that you could actually see. Now in her, um, in the I-cord bind off, it's a three stitch I-cord bind off. And it looks really big. So to me, I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to put that on the bit top of my poncho because I think it's going to be too big. So um, I might do this garter stitch edge, which is little, and do it after the ribbing and just do it to, um, to one garter stitch rib. Like in each um, ridge, garter stitch ridge is made from two knit rows. So I might do two knit rows and then bind off using the easy sewn bind off. I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what I'll do. But you can see down here, even where I started the knit three purl one with a provisional cast on, it is very nice and um, flat. It's not sticking out at all. So maybe let's take a look and see if we can do that. So I started taking out my provisional cast on. And so I was just going to take that out and see what we can do. Sometimes on the provisional cast on, the yarn gets twisted. And I wouldn't even worry about that. Just take your scissors and clip that yarn. And it helps if you have a nice little um, double point that you can use to pull that out. And we'll just take this provisional cast on off here. And you know, I could do a three by one ribbing and actually this has the three by one ribbing on it and then just do one garter stitch ridge and see what that looks like. It's kind of nice when you're doing, when you're trying to decide what you're gonna choose for your edges. It, if you do these little, you know, cast on like 20 stitches, well on the three by one ribbing, it has to be the three uh, multiple of four. And if you want it to match on the other side, which you're going to be doing it in the round, so you don't really have to worry about matching it in the round. But these samples are done flat, so I added three additional stitches to the edge so I could end with, start with knit three and end with knit three. And this is, there you go. Sometimes when you're picking up your provisional cast on, if you do it with a smaller needle, it's a little easier than knitting, doing it with a needle. And I'm just going to clip this one again. Actually, I want to get that one on the needle. So what is it you're doing here? I'm just picking up my provisional cast on. I almost have it all picked up here. And...
Then I was thinking what I could do. I just, I don't know if this, what this will look like. The one more thing that I was thinking is that I could do, try and do one garter ridge and um, then do that easy sewn bind off. We'll see what we can do here. But I, I kind of think that's what I want to do with on my edge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I might like that. Okay, on this last stitch, if you get, if you're not sure, see now that one pulled right out. So if I had a problem like that, where that one stitch just pulled right, it un unknit itself. There. Boop. Okay. And of course, I cut off my scrap yarn. Um, so here I am. What I could do here with my three by one ribbing is do one set, one garter ridge, and then bind off using the easy sewn bind off instead of doing this. But let me see if I can grab, if I can just, if I have scrap yarn with me, I wanna show you that real quick so you can see it. Um, I do. And I have scrap yarn, so I can just join more yarn. If you wanted to and you're knitting the project, you could leave yourself some extra yarn for doing the, the other side of your pattern. But if you don't, you can always pick up. I just attach myself to my um, little pins. Not good. All right, so when we're doing this, I'm just going to knit across. So I want I want to just see what this does. So I'm going to knit across here. And I'm kind of looking to see make sure my stitches are oriented that this right leg is in the front. See how this one the right hand leg is in the back. I'm just going to switch that to the front. And I'm checking these stitches as I'm knitting to make sure the right hand leg is in the front. And this one is kind of cockeyed, but that right hand leg is still in the front. Okay, now I kind of want to slip that stitch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, one more knit row. So I have that, remember how I told you each garter ridge is made of two rows of knit stitch. So if I was doing this in the round, I'd be knitting a row and then purling a row. If I'm if I put my provisional cast on, I could just purl that row and it'll turn it into garter stitch because the provisional cast on is <coughs> basically a knit stitch. <coughs> so here I have my um, garter stitch and then I can do the easy sewn bind off. So let's see what that does. And we'll see if we like that. So I'm doing a tail that's at least three times the width of my project. I just wanna see what this looks like. I haven't tried it. So you insert your darning needle, you um, put it on your uh, yarn, and then you go insert two stitches to the left, and then one stitch to the right. And then you go two stitches to the left. And one stitch to the right. And when the, you go to the right, you take that stitch off. And you do this all the way across. And we'll see what kind of an edge we get. We want an edge that looks nice. Um, and it would be nice that we have if we have the top and the bottom matching each other. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> I know I try to get too matchy matchy, but you know how it is. So as I'm going along doing mine, if you guys have great ideas to prevent rolled edges, don't forget to post comments in the comment section and share with us because tons of people are watching from all over the place and we can help each other learn, right? And so that's what our whole thing is about is trying to help each other grow as knitters and as human beings. And so I love whatever I can do to help people and give them, let them try and reach outside of that box and um, 
learn something new, try something new. Don't be afraid to experiment. The worst thing that's going to happen is you get to knit that lovely yarn twice. And is that the end of the world? Nope, not hardly. It is fantastic. I call it free practice because you get to use the yarn twice so you didn't have to buy another skin of yarn. <laughs> right, Jim? I sometimes get excited about that. I'm like, yay, I don't have to buy more yarn. I can just knit this yarn again. <laughs> Especially if I like the yarn, I'm like, score. <laughs> it's totally fantastic. So I'm almost finished with my easy sewn bind off. And then we go in there and we're done. There you go. See, now let's compare. Oh, those little pins are going to be the death of me today. All right. So if you look at this bottom edge, it is pretty flared for the I-cord and it's super thick. I do like how it rolls around the edge for some applications. It might be fantastic, but I don't know if that's too thick for a rolled collar. But this one is just the easy sewn bind off. You like more petite stuff. Huh? Yeah, I like more structured, tailored. I don't know. I kind of like that one and it doesn't roll <laughs> i don't know i'll have to see i might do that because that is do you like it jim what do you think it's nice huh so you guys post comments in the comment section and let me know what you think that you like this one or maybe that one I don't know. I To me, I like things that are a little more refined just because for me, um, big bulky things don't tend to look good on me. It looks like something that might be suitable for an adult, but not not me. <laughs> so it's not, it's not too good. But um, anyway, there are different things that you can do to prevent those rolled edges. You can use one by one ribbing. You can use three by one ribbing. You can use garter stitch and you could use an I cord. You can use seed stitch. You can use moss stitch. You can use all different kinds of things. A knit one, purl one, knit one on the edge. The sky is the limit to prevent those edges from rolling, but you need to drop in that, um, provisional cast on so then you can go back later and decide what it is that you're going to be doing like I did in my lovely poncho my top notch by Petra Breckstone it's a lovely project and next week I'm going to be finishing up on this poncho and I'll let you know if I learned anything new or if I changed anything and so we can take a look and get some ideas for our future ponchos. I know uh, there's a lot of uh, ponchos out there. There's one poncho that is called the Easy Folded Poncho by Church Mouse Yarn and Tees, Tees, Church Mouse Yarn and Tees. Hmm, tongue twister. Anyway, it's a uh, pattern that we have on our website as well. And it is made out of strictly of garter stitch and it has edges too. So if any of you have knit your Church Mouse uh, poncho and you have used a different kind of edge to keep it from rolling or something post comments in the comments in section and let us know and we can learn from you and that would be great and you'll also be entered to win one of these lovely skeins of noro and the ones that we're going to be offering for the prize this week are the blue or the purple so you guys choose and the lucky winner will get this mailed out to them next week. And all you guys have to do, the winner just contacts customer service and we send it out in the mail right away. So I, that is what I'm working on for this week and we will finish it up next week and um, we will be able to uh, share with you our ending. Now that we have to find our winner from our Prize for last week. Let's see who it is. I don't even know yet because I never read it. Oh, Kathleen Johnson. Yay! You want some heritage. This is a sock yarn, but you can also use it for shawls and scarves and all different kinds of fingering weight projects. And so all you have to do, Kathleen Johnson, is contact customer service and give us your shipping address so we can get it out in the mail to you. And this is this beautiful color that we our um knitters chose for this last week it's heritage sock. so yep it's heritage sock which is a 75 percent merino 25 percent nylon and it's not just for socks it's for shawls 
and whatever you want in it. And it's not itchy. It's a nice yarn. I really like it. If you guys haven't tried Heritage, we have a ton of colors at Alpaca Direct that you can choose from. And it is a very reasonably priced merino yarn that you can use for color work projects. So if any of you are looking for fingering weight yarns and a beautiful selection of colors and the multis, um, we have both of those on our website at Alpaca Direct. Now, was there anything else that I missed, Jim? I think I pretty much got everything. Um, yeah, I pretty much went over everything. So I hope that you guys are able to use this on your project so that you don't have those rolled edges. Oh, you know what I wanted to do this week is I wanted to answer some questions. We keep forgetting that. Okay. So first question that people ask is, how do you recognize a project that will curl? How do you know? And for me, when I'm knitting, the way that I know that a project will probably curl is anything that has a lot of knit stitches all on one side. So a lot of stock net stitch. Now this project has a lot of knit stitches you can see in the front here. And you could see that it's already curling on these edges. So anything that has that kind of a, a, a patterning to it is going to curl. So just make sure to head that problem off at the pass and put, slip in a provisional cast on and you can address it later. You can knit the whole thing and see what feels good to you and then you can come to that bridge at the end of your project and you won't be stuck going, I have knit for, you know, maybe you knit for a month straight to get the poncho done and then you have these horrible curled edges and you're going oh not good so that is how you head off that problem and don't let it happen to you now the second question that we had from our knit knitters was ideas for holiday stockings now we have an easy um entry level stocking pattern that is by church mouse as well and it is knit with an afterthought heel so if you look in our patterns under church mouse you'll find an easy christmas stocking pattern and that is one of the best you can also go to different websites and and you might be able to find a ton of free patterns. Um, when you're first learning, I don't know that you need to invest a ton into these projects, but there are the Church Mouse Yarn and Tees. Uh, they write very um, beginner-friendly patterns, and they are an excellent pattern to follow, easy for people to follow. Now, the third question that I had is, I knit a swatch and I didn't get gauge. How do I dress this? It says, I moved up one needle size and ended up with too few. What do you do if you're in between two needle sizes? Now, I have a couple of ideas for you. Number one, some of us knitters, when we're knitting with wood, we knit looser or tighter because we have a, a tighter grip on it. Or you might knit tighter or looser with metal. So you could ch change the content of the actual needle that you're using. So if you're using metal, try wood in the same size and see what you get. Also, did you know that the different brands like such as Chowgu and um, Addy have different millimeters for different sizes? Check it out. There are, between the different brands, the needles can be slightly different sizes and they can use different millimeters for different sizes. So if you're um, looking and you're having a hard time, you could also change brands. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that'll help. So for any of you who are having problems getting gauge, um, change your the, the needle um, content of what it's made out of or change the brands. And either one of those could help you. Um, I think that's about it. So next week, we're going to be talking about the rest of this poncho that I'm doing. And I will finalize my edging so that you can see what it turned out to be. So I hope that you have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday.